the Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, praise the Lord, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us right here on the One Touch Ministry broadcast. I am Pastor Shannon, and this is Prophetess Naditra Young. <laughs> yes, it is. She's right here in the flesh, right here, present, right with us. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. And you just came back from a trip, and how was your trip, honey? <laughs> oh my goodness, the encounter was so amazing. When I say amazing, uh, amazing. Yes. In Florida. Oh yeah, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so while she was away in Florida, I got a chance to preach a message at our home church at the First Baptist Church of Riverside, and I got a chance to preach. My God, God has been wonderful. I'm telling you, listen, when I was at the encounter, I got a chance to sneak away for a little bit and got an opportunity to hear Pastor Shannon preach this wonderful word of God is wonderful. I'm here to tell you that God is truly wonderful and he loves you. And I'm telling you, he's trying to do and he will do some wonderful things just for you. Woo! Yes. Oh my God. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm telling you, and I'm believing that for the remainder of 2021 amen that you proclaim that god is wonderful he's wonderful yes, yes he is so tune into the message yes. and enjoy today I want to share with you yeah. and your family, family. And the love of jesus christ jesus christ so tune in tune in and we will grow together to increase our faith with god with one touch in the streets, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Oh, one touch. In the streets, we're here for you. 
it says here, Isaiah 25, 1. And I'm reading from the King James Version for this version here. It says, uh, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee and will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Hallelujah. Thy counsels of old are faithful, are faithfulness and true. Hallelujah. And before I give you guys my subject title really quick, I just want you to just think about a few little things. Think about some of the things that God has done for you. Think about some of the things that God uh, has done for you in your life. I just want you to think really quick. And my subject title today is God has been wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just shout out really quick. God has been wonderful. He has been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to me. Go back a couple of slides here. We ain't got there yet. Or we? Okay, maybe. All right, I'll probably put that slide in there. So just keep it right there. Uh-huh. So here we go. Uh, here he is. We are in the first Sunday of May. We have exactly... Uh, we have been exactly one year and two months into what has been deemed a global crisis. Uh, it has affected everything from fun and fellowship with our family to loved ones to school classes, church closing, business closing, and unemployment. Sickness and death is on an all-time high and that's enough to turn around and tell somebody that I'm glad that you're here. I'm Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad y'all with me on today. Just turn around and tell somebody I'm glad that you're here. Because uh, as I look back over the past year, two months, uh, I believe we have some believers uh, have been taking this time for granted. We've been taking um, just stuff for granted. There's some people who uh, should still be here, but they're not here with us any longer. Whether that's due to COVID, whether that's due to drugs, whether that's due to death or disease, uh, there are people that's in the hospital right now that are on machines to help them to live. But as I look around this congregation here, I don't see nobody hooked up to a machine. I don't see nobody that need no assistance with uh, with walking and talking and moving and having the activities of your of your of your uh, life. And I'm just here to say, God has been wonderful. Hallelujah! Some people are are on life support, which means that they need that machine to help them breathe, to help give them life. And I'm so excited that the only uh, person that is here to help me give life is Jesus. Only person right now here is to help me to sustain right now is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And if they happen to unplug that machine, then that means that their life has expired. So I just want to drop this little golden nugget to you and say that be grateful for life, health, and strength. Amen. The songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And he said, I love the fact that he said, I won't complain because it's not the fact that I can't complain because I can't complain. I can tell and say everything about what's been going on and what's been happening and how my money's been funny and how my change been strange and credit just won't get it. But I won't complain. Hallelujah. I can't complain, but I won't complain. And he goes on to say that uh, sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? And this takes me back to, you know, I, I was going through some terrible times in my life. And my mother, she said something to me one day, Trey. I guess she felt like that, you know, something was going on in my life. And she said, you... Uh, want to know the reason why uh, so much, uh, you know, why we go through ups and downs in life? And I said, no, mom. I said, I really don't know the reason why we go through ups and downs. She said, that's to prove to you that you're actually still alive. Right. It's to prove to you that you're still alive because if everything is all hunky-dory and everything is just flying in the sky and everything is just perfect, then that must mean that you done made it to heaven. 
So when you experience ups and downs, just know that you're still living. So when I think about that, and I think about so much pain, it reminds me about, uh, you know, uh, about some young people in their lives uh, who uh, tragically, they, you know, they say, hey, you know, I've been through hurt, and I've been through this, and I've been through that, and everything else. So, you know, some of these kids, they do face so much stuff in this time right now. A lot of us in this room is suffering, but I have a heart for the young people because they suffer a whole lot more. They go through some stuff that we didn't have to go through. We didn't have to experience. Some people may have experienced it, but everybody didn't experience it. Some teams now go through stuff uh, and they have peer pressure. I mean, it's so evident right now, the peer pressure. Um, they have access to weed. Uh, their parents really don't want to be involved in their life. And a lot of times they have a decision making to figure out if they're homosexual, if they're heterosexual, if they bisexual, if they're transsexual, if they're other kind of sexuals. And I haven't heard, you know, now I heard something that pansexual, right. non-binary, and all this yep. other kind of stuff. It's confusing to me. I'm not talking about people. I'm just letting you know that these, that these young people, they are experiencing something that we didn't have to uh, experience in our life. And, and then now, you know, I was you know, doing some research and a lot of them, matter of fact, I was watching a video and the young man, he said, I don't prefer to be called uh, him or boy or man. I'm really called to be preferred to call him. I mean, not the they, them, and all that. I said, wait a minute, how, that, that's a plural. Uh -huh. I mean, when you can go through English, am I right? When you're an English yeah. teacher major, that's a plural. You can't be both. So, no, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad against, I'm just saying what these teenagers are facing right now and day. My God. And so I said all this to say because, you know, a lot of young people, they're, they're, they're facing so much stuff. And I want to point out one thing, uh, because the world is changing, yep. that teen suicide rate has spiked 56% over the past year. It says right here uh, that 56% uh, 50, 50, 50 of the kids between the ages, this would this would trip me out. Between the ages of 12 and 19. Yep. So can you imagine your child taking their life at such a young age? Why are they taking their life? I mean, they, there's bullying and there's this and that and there's cyberbullying and so much stuff that's happening. Then you know, then we have people who don't accept them. Uh, or don't want to love them. A lot of these kids just need love, they need affection, they need attention, and a lot of us adults don't give it to them. And so as I look around the sanctuary right now, we, by we, we knowing that these young people need this love, they need this attention, and there's something that Jesus can give them. So why aren't we bringing them here to the house of God? Put that slide up for me. And I got this from the CDC. Yep. Uh, website, it says suicide affects all ages. It isn't just yep. teenagers. It affects all ages. Yep. It said it, it is the second leading cause of death of people ages 10 to 34. Yep. The fourth leading cause amongst people ages 34 to 54. And the fifth leading cause amongst people 45 to 54. Four. Wow. Suicide, people killing each other. Yep. What in your mind gives you the, 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 the thought that, you know what, I just want to end it all. Jesus. But we have something here through the power, through the Holy Spirit, that we can change and transform those people's lives. And so that they can come yes. and be able to learn about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. So what are we doing as a body of believers, uh, Second Chronicles um, seven and fourteen. It's from the English Standard Version of the Bible. It says, "If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven Thanks and God. will Thanks forgive God. their sins and heal their land." I want to give you guys a kingdom principle right here that it's time to pray. Yeah. Oh my God, it is time to pray. 
it's time out for just patty caking and it's time out for, you know, us not doing nothing as a body believers. I know that COVID did, you know, made some restrictions and things, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop doing the work of the Lord. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to get down on our knees. There's so much stuff that's going on in the body of Christ that's just so unnecessary. And we need time to pray. We need to be able to get down on our knees and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as humbly as I know how to be able to wash my slate clean. Help me to develop a relationship with you. Help others to be able to develop a relationship with you. Help my neighbors to be able to develop a relationship with you. Father God, I'm humbling myself and I'm praying unto you for my family member that's battling with suicide, for my family member that's battling with addiction, for my family member that's battling with all kinds of things that don't need to be dealing with. God, I'm humbling myself. Thank you, Jesus. It's time yes. to pray. Yes. It's time. Yes. Hallelujah. And let me just throw this out at you really quick because when we pray, we can show somebody else that uh, we're praying that God has changed our life around. Those people can say, God, been wonderful. Let's look at the word wonderful really quick. It's an adjective. Wonderful it means inspiring, <laughs> delight, uh, pleasure, or admiration. Extreme good, marvelous. Uh, uh, wonderful has a root word, which is wonder. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wonder. A, a, a wonder is a feeling of surprise mm -hmm. mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful, unexpected, mm -hmm. unfamiliar, mm -hmm. uh, not anticipated, um, and inexpectable. You see, there has been some times in my life when I thought that I was, wasn't going to have enough. There have been some times in my life when I thought that I didn't have enough and began to get down on my knees and I began to humble myself and I said, God, I don't know where the food is going to come from, but Father God, you said that if I would just humble myself and pray that you're going to be able to do some things, you're going to change some things for me in my life, you're going to change some situations in my life, and Father God, I believe that you have done it in the name of Jesus. By the time I finish praying and come up off my come up off my knees, now this before cash app and everything else, you know, I'll either get a knock at the door or I get a phone call. Like, hey Shane, what you doing? Um, nothing, just finished praying. Well, you know, uh, I got some groceries over here that uh, I have. I mean, this is some extra stuff, you know, or you know, hey, I was down at the food bank. Whatever the case may have been, but God supplied. It was something that was unexpected. It was something that was unfamiliar. It was something unexplainable. A miracle had happened. A surprise had happened in my life. And I was able to say, God, you have been wonderful. The Hebrew word for wonderful is, I believe, it is a pala. Mm -hmm. yes. A pala is, uh, is a verb. It is based off a uh, noun of wonder, marvelous. So it expresses the idea of doing or making uh, a wondrous thing. Amen. It was found um, in the Bible. Uh, uh, it was found in the Bible and occurred 70 times uh, in the Hebrew Old Testament, and the verb is found for the first time in Genesis uh, 18 and 14, and that's when you know uh, Sarah, uh, uh, the angels came to the tent to Sarah and said that, "Hey, you're about to have a baby." She was like, "I'm old and stricken in age. You know how in the world I'm gonna have a baby?" And then the uh, the question came out: Is there anything too hard for the Lord? That is my question I want to pose to you today. Is there anything too hard for, the, for God? For you and your time, this situation, I know that we're going through it. I know that sometimes have been hard and things seem like that they have been pushed up against you. But I'm here to say that is there anything too hard for God? Uh, Papa is uh, permanently, uh, is used permanently with God 
as its subject uh, expresses action that are well beyond the bounds of human power or expectation. This idea is expressed by the psalmist. This is the Lord doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. In Psalms 118, 23. Deliverance from Egypt was the result of God's wondrous acts. It was, uh, it was with a stretched out hand that smite Egypt with, uh, with all my mighty wonders, which I do. Exodus 3, 20. Praise is, uh, contra is constantly due God for all his wondrous deeds. You find that in Psalms um, 91. At the time, and, and at the same time, God does not require anything of his people to do. Um, it's too hard for them. And so this is where a lot of people get to the scripture. You know, God, you know, God won't put more on you than you can bear. Deuteronomy 30, 30 and 11. Although sometimes uh, may appear impossible to man, it's still uh, within God's power. If it was marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in these days, should I also be marvelous in my eyes, said the Lord of hosts, and that's in Zechariah 8 and 6. What are some of the wondrous things God has done for you lately? Ah, so much. I need you to be able to see what God has done for you lately. The Bible says this, that now, Jericho right. was straightly shut up uh -huh. because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And, none came in. Mm -hmm. and the Lord said unto Joshua, See! Somebody say, See! See, I, See, I have given unto you the hand of Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Uh, now, the gates of Jericho... Oh, let me read the NIV version. So put the NIV version up there. It says, now the gates of Jericho were uh, securely um, borrowed because of the uh, yes. Israelites. None went out and none came in. Let me just say this real quick to you. That you got to be able to see yep. what God is doing for you in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to know. I'm jumping ahead of myself. What does my next slide say? I know. Okay, yeah. Three things. There we go. Three things you should know. God has been wonderful. You realize, uh, the first thing I want you to realize is this, that's in our scripture. You have to realize that the thing that you're afraid of is more afraid of you than you are of it. All right. And so we see here in the scripture that uh, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Yeah. That means that although the Israelites may have been afraid to go inside Jericho because they had their mighty men of valor. They had their men of war on the inside of, that, inside of Jericho. But God said that you have to realize uh, that Jericho was straight to shut up because of the children of Israel. That means that they were scared of them. So what's the thing that you're afraid of? What's the thing that you're afraid of the most? You have to realize that it's more afraid of you that you are of it. Some people in life don't move because they move in fear. Yeah. Some people don't do certain things because they move in fear. The Bible says that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What is it that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of sickness? Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of disease? What is it that's stopping you going out on faith? What happens when, when fear grips your heart? You become stagnant. You don't go nowhere. You lose uh, your self-confidence, your self-awareness. Uh, you lose focus on what the thing that you're supposed to be doing. So don't lose your focus. You have to know which way that you're going. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So uh, I had a few quotes here. It says, hope is our spirits, what oxygen is to our lungs. Let's hope and you die. They may not bury you for a while, but without hope you are dead inside. The only way to face the future is to fly straight into it on the wings of hope. 
Hope is the energy of the soul. Hope is the power of tomorrow. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. It says, life without hope is a, vo uh, is a voyage with no compass. Right. My God, that means you just go. The Bible says this. The Bible says that without a vision, my people perish. They, that actually means that they, without a vision, without a prophetic unction, they cast off all restraints and they run wild. They just do any and everything. Next slide. It's true. Uh, optimist, is, optimist is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. You got to have confidence in this thing. You got to know that God is with you, that God will never leave you, that God will never forsake you. You have to hope. The Bible says that without hope, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Next slide. Faith is to believe what you do not see. Come on. The reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Amen. And that leads me to my next point. It says no matter the situation, God has already given you the victory. You got to see it. You got to be able to see that God has already have this down for you. You got to see that your children is saved. You got to see that your neighbor is going to turn his life around. You got to see that your husband is going to be able to walk again and talk again. You got to be able to see that you're going to have a victorious life. You got to see it and move forward and believe it. The Bible, not the Bible, there's a song that says, I'm going to see uh, of your victory is that I want to see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord yeah. there's power yeah. hallelujah there's power in the name of Jesus every war he raged he will win oh I'm oh I'm going back down I'm not going to back down from any giant see you have to be able to see the victory this right here is telling me that you got to be able to see the giant that's in front of you. And you say, back up off of me. Oh, hallelujah. I need you to be able to tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see the giant. I see the thing that's in front of me. I see that God is about to do something for me, but there's a giant that's standing in my way. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw it in the towel. I'm not going to back. You need to just shout out, back up off me, devil. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.